Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Now there's many ways that you can read it. Because there's many people that have lords called Buddha and Krishna and, you know, and there's many lords. But it says, the Lord. Okay, so then we know we are confessing the one true God, the almighty creator of heaven and earth. So we put an emphasis on the Lord is my shepherd. Okay, say it. Okay, then knowing that Philippians 2 says, God raised up Jesus Christ from the dead and gave him a name that's above every other name, that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue that should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay? So, if we say the Lord, we know if it's the Lord, it must be Jesus Christ that is risen from the dead and that has now got all authority and power. Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19. All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. God raised him and seated him in his own right hand, far above all principality and power and every name that can be named, not only in this world, but also in the world that is to come, and has put everything under his feet. Okay, so Jesus Christ is... Okay, so if I say the Lord, I know which Lord. So the Lord, then I know which one I'm talking about. Okay, so emphasis on the Lord is my shepherd. Say Okay, so emphasis on the verb there. The Lord is my shepherd. In other words, there's no other one that's going to guide me, lead me, guard me. Okay, so I put emphasis on the The Lord is my shepherd. Okay, now if I emphasize the last word, I know exactly what he is in relationship to this psalm that I'm going to read right now. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay, what does a shepherd do? He leads his sheep. Okay, so in John chapter 10, he says, I am the good shepherd. Not just a shepherd, the, the good shepherd. Hmm? And then he says, I lead my sheep. Jesus says, I lead my sheep. And then he says something else. He says, my sheep knows. Okay? My voice. Thank you for the excitement in the house today. My sheep knows my voice. My sheep hears my voice. Okay? So, if the Lord is my shepherd, and I know this is the good shepherd, and the sheep hear his voice, then what is going to happen to the sheep? Come on, everybody. I shall not want. In other words, I mean, wants goes beyond needs. If I need something, it means it's urgent. I cannot do without it. Want is Beyond my need. It is my needs are met, but I want something. You know, maybe I don't need another car, but I want another car. Maybe I don't need another shoes, but I want other shoes. Maybe I don't need another jacket, but I want another jacket. So it's beyond my need. If the Lord is my shepherd, and I know who this Lord is, and He leads the sheep, and the sheep knows His voice, that means if I hear His voice, I shall not want. Come on, how many would live in a place where you don't have to beg every day to get your needs met, but you can now get the stuff that you want? exceedingly abundantly far and above all that I can even think or pray for God wants to need your wants I shall not want and then he goes on he leads me beside still waters in other words he gives me rest 
Okay, Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, he says, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, and you shall find rest for your soul. Okay, your soul is your mind. How many would love to have some rest and peace in their mind? Yes. I mean, your mind is the thing that run around, you know, then you fear this, and then you're scared of that, and then you're worried about this, and then you're troubled about this. And Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says, we have the mind of Christ. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, or Philippians 2, verse 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ's mind is at peace and at rest. And I really believe we need to get that soul mind of us at rest and he compares it to still waters he leads me beside still waters in other words he's gonna calm the storm in your life you don't have to be troubled worried over your parents your children your brothers your sisters your work your schoolwork your finances your money your petrol your car your house you don't have to worry about anything Come on, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Uh, and then he comes on to say, Be anxious for nothing. Okay, in other words, worry over nothing. Now don't look angry and don't look sad, but how many would love not to worry? Worry about nothing. Scared about nothing. Troubled about nothing. Total peace. Ah, Peace. I mean, they gotta trouble you to trouble you to get you into trouble to make you to trouble, and they can't trouble you no ma matter how much trouble they bring you away, no ma how much pressure they put on you. You just always, hey, peace. Peace, my mate. Peace, my friend. Peace, my bra. Peace, success. Peace. Everybody say peace. peace. And then he says, it takes me to green pastures. Okay? Not to burn down fields. Is that cool? He doesn't say he takes me to a burn down field, you know, where he takes me to green pastures. You know, a sheep doesn't want to eat dry grass. He loves to eat green grass. Okay. In other words, he's going to see to it that all your needs are met. Beyond your wants, your needs will be met. Okay? So he's going to take you to green pastures. In other words, your stomach will always be full. And you know what he does? Again, the whole thing, he restores my soul. Again, he takes us back. To our mind story because my soul and my mind runs together so first of all it's going to give me rest for my soul it's going to still my soul my mind is going to be at rest and if my mind maybe comes to trouble beyond the still waters he's also going to get take me to green pastures in other words if my soul maybe is troubled he's going to restore my soul that's how much the shepherd cares in the very first two verses of Psalm 23. He says, if the Lord is my shepherd. The first thing that the shepherd does is he leads his sheep and my sheep knows my voice. And if they know my voice, they're going to have rest for their souls. And if their souls maybe are troubled, I'm going to help them. I'm also going to restore their souls. Hmm? And then the rest would follow. What does the rest say? Right, did you understand my... Uh... All right, okay. Isn't it funny how when we are tested, we don't even know the simplest psalm in the Bible? 
I want us to realize how important Psalm 23 is. That's how, why from a small little boy, that's the first thing you learn when you come to a Christian school. Psalm 23 is the first psalm you learn. When you're at your house, that's the first psalm you learn. We need to be able to say it off by heart, knowing if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If enemies comes against me, he's going to spread a table before me. In other words, I will eat while the devil is attacking me. I mean, I mean, you're sitting there with your McDonald's and here comes the devil. I mean, ah. You say, no, 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 table is prepared in the present. You eat, you say, hey, sucker, stay on that side of the table. This table is prepared by my shepherd. And if you come closer, he's got a rod and a staff that's comforting me. In other words, the shepherd is going to get rid of the devil. I don't even have to worry about the devil. Amen. So it's so important to know that the Lord is my shepherd. And the most important of the whole shepherd thing is my sheep knows, my sheep hears my voice. How will I know the voice of the shepherd? Okay, if Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, is the word. In the beginning, John chapter 1 was the word. Okay? In other words, the word and the shepherd is one and the same person. That means the shepherd has the word. The word is actually the shepherd. So if the shepherd is my shepherd and he's my Lord, then the word is what will tell me what he says. In other words, God will not say something contrary to this book. In other words, if I say the Lord said to me, and I can't prove it out of this word. Or oh, this word will oppose what I'm saying. I didn't hear the voice of the good shepherd. And that's so easy. People come and say, oh, God said to me, I must do that. God will not tell you something that's against the word. Huh? Huh? Johnny, why did you slap Susie on the playground? Well, I just felt God said... I should slap her because she's always ugly with all the other little boys. God will not tell you to slap somebody. The word said if somebody slap you on your cheek, turn the other cheek, say, enjoy yourself, man. I mean, they should not be angering you because God's supposed to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. I've got another revelation on that one. If you are really guided by the shepherd and led by the shepherd... There will not be anybody slapping you on your face because the rod and staff would have protected you in the presence of your enemies. You would have been sitting at a table. So if you are slapped, why Jesus said, turn the other cheek. He said, you've been out of the leading of the shepherd. That's why you slapped. So turn the other cheek, let them slap you again so that you can wake up and realize you must not be slapped. Say, so, ooh, 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 ooh. I mean, Psalm 91, if I then dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's the last portion of the psalm. Then Psalm 91 that says, He that dwelleth in that secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And you know what he says about that place? Nothing shall hurt you. Nothing shall harm you. No evil shall come near you. In other words, maybe I've stepped out of the leading of the shepherd and I'm in the dry grass and the wolves are busy chasing me around and I look around and the shepherd is standing there with his staff waiting in the green grass to take me to still waters and I'm running here by a dry spread and I'm trying to eat dry grass and the wolves are chasing me and I don't know which voice I'm hearing because there's lions and there's wolves and there's jackals and he says, run to the shepherd and you'll find green grass, still waters. Wow, rest for your soul. Amen. Come on, say, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. 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 In other words, I need to hear his voice. Okay, so the voice will be working with the word. So this is the easiest. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, Because of the great mercies of God, I beg you. 
to present your bodies a living sacrifice. This is your reasonable service. Okay, reasonable is your mind. Dear beloved children, the word reason means it's something that you do with your mind. So you reason. But if I present my body a living sacrifice, in other words, if I give my all to Him, that is my reasonable service. In other words, with my mind, I've decided that I belong to Him. I belong to Him forever I belong to Him. My reasonable service is to present my body. In other words, I give my all to Him. I decide with my mind, this is my reasonable. Then verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Conformed, it means somebody stands there and they're making these little cookies, you know. And they've got this little cookie squeezer and... Everyone looks exactly the same. That's conform. But be transformed. In other words, transform means you are changed. But be changed by the renewing of your mind. So I've got to renew my mind. That's my reasonable service. In other words, with my reason, I decide I'm going to renew my mind. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to think the way this book thinks. So if I have this word in me, if I read more Bible, if I study more Bible, if I memorize more scriptures, it becomes easier and easier and easier to hear the voice of the shepherd. Because the shepherd is connected to his word is one with his word so the more I know the word the more I have the word in my mind the easier it is for me to hear the voice of the good shepherd amen, amen. 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 the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want and he leads me, or he leads me to green forest. He takes me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, thy comforteth me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall live in the house of the Lord forever. My sheep hear my voice. So the more I hear his voice, the more I know his voice, the more easier it is to walk in the divine will of God. The more easier it is to know exactly what to do in every situation and every circumstance. Oh, if I can just know what God says to me. Follow the shepherd. He will not lead you in the wrong path. Oh, I don't know, but I'm feeling I'm in the wrong place. Well, maybe you didn't follow the shepherd. How do I follow the shepherd? By hearing his voice. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Revelation 3.20. If any man hear my voice, I will come into him and sup with him. In other words, Jesus says, I'm knocking, I'm knocking, and I'm knocking. How is he knocking? With his voice. He says, if any man hear my voice and open, I will come in. He's not talking to sinners. He's talking to sheep. He says, hey, sheep, I'm knocking. I want to come to you. I want to eat with you. In other words, I don't want you to eat at the de devil's table. I want to prepare a table before you in the very presence of your enemy. So I will come and sup with you if you will just hear my voice. So how do we hear his voice? On the inside of us, there's an inner man. Okay, Everybody say, there's a man inside of me. It's my inner man. Okay, that inner man speaks to you. Okay, so when I was small, this is what my mother said. I see that little devil on your shoulder is talking to you. 
And I was good. My mother said, I see that little angel on your shoulder talk to you. Okay, maybe your mother never said it, you know, because you're too young. But the older people believed in there's a little demon on your one shoulder. And there's a little angel on your one shoulder. And if you are good, the angel spoke to you. And if you are bad, the devil spoke to you. Or if you are good, you listen to the angel. And if you are bad, you listen to the devil. But that's not true. Because Jesus says, my sheep, listen to this, do not know the voice okay of strangers in other words I cannot say the devil say because Jesus says if I'm his sheep I will not even know the voice of the devil in other words the devil has no right to talk to you say it the devil has no right to talk in other words, if I do something wrong, it's not the devil that led me. It's me that did it. Don't say amen. James chapter 1 says, Every man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust. And then when the lust has conceived and sin has come, then only does the devil step in. Then only does sin come to the front. So the devil can't make me do stuff because I belong to God. I can't hear the voice of the devil because I hear the voice of the shepherd. So if I do wrong, it's my own stubbornness, my own will, my own stuff that I haven't conquered. The devil has not got any right in your life. Listen to the word of a man of God today. There is no devil in you. There's no devil close to you. There's no devil misleading you. The devil can't talk to you because Jesus says the devil don't talk to you. Jesus says you don't hear the voice of a stranger. The only voice you hear is the voice of of Jesus or the voice of your unrenewed mind but the more your mind is renewed the more you will hear the voice of the good shepherd the more you will do right and you will stop doing wrong so on the inside of you you have an inner voice and that voice is talking all day the only thing you need to do is be obedient to that voice in first Timothy chapter 4 Paul says the following. He says, in the last days, people will fall away from the faith because they have hardened or seared their consciences as with a hot iron. Your consciences is the deep-seated voice of God in your life. And every time I listen to this voice, I make it more audible. And every time I don't listen to this voice, I make it softer in my heart. So if the voice says something good, I will know it's God. If he says, go pray for Jackie. And I go pray for Jackie. Oh, I say, Jackie, can I pray for you? Jackie, please. So I pray for Jackie. Jackie, I needed that. You know, and you walk away. Oh, I heard the voice of the shepherd. Yes. Then the shepherd says, go share your sandwich <laughs> with Susie. Oh, no. Susie never share her sandwiches with me. No? And now all of a sudden you go back to the class and you feel like there's a war between you and Susie. Susie didn't do anything. You didn't listen to the voice. And now the voice is hurt on the inside of you and you feel like there's an offense. She said, Susie, what's wrong with you? Susie, nothing. Are you okay? You know, but it's you that didn't listen. Do you understand? I don't know how to explain it today. But there's a deep voice on the inside of me called my conscience. The more I listen to that voice, the more I renew my mind, the more these two voices will be united. And before I know it, I will be someone that are walking in the Spirit. Amen. So, how do I walk in the Spirit? How can I not fulfill the lust of the flesh? Okay, he says, if I walk in the Spirit, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, not the temptations of the devil. 
if I walk in the Spirit, that means if I listen to the inner voice that's connected to the Word of God, that is following the voice of the Good Shepherd, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Then he says, the works of the flesh are made manifest. Not the works of the devil. Not the temptations of the devil. The works of the flesh are made manifest. In other words, I need to conquer my flesh. Not by trying not to do evil. By trying to do good. So, just take Psalm 23 and make it again a motto in our lives. Recite it to yourself. When you go to bed, say, the Lord is my shepherd. I, I remember the days when I was troubled by evil spirits because of the life I came out of. You know, there's one thing that I did constantly. I took Psalm 23. I wrote it on a piece of paper. I stuck it next to my bed. I li had a little lamp that shone on it. I had a fluorescent cross over it. So every night when I went to bed, I was so scared as a young man. And I looked at Psalm 23 and the fluorescent light and the little light. I said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not one. And you know, it brought me such comfort, knowing that his rod and staff will comfort me. And the more I listen, the more I renew my mind, the more I will walk in the Spirit, the lesser the flesh will have control over me. It's not the devil. The devil has been dealt with. It's conquering your flesh by walking in the Spirit, by listening to the voice of the shepherd. God is your refuge. God is your strength. Jesus loves you. And you know what the good shepherd did? He laid his life down for you, died for you, lifted up his life again to make sure that you're going to understand he took the beating for you. You don't have to take the beating. Follow the shepherd and be successful.